Hello again everyone, it is Pressing the Button back with another Unity tutorial. And in this part we're going to be focusing on enemy animation. We're not going to jump straight into the movement of our enemies because I thought it'd be nice to get those signature idle animations that we usually see in Space Invaders games done right before we start getting to technical things again. So I'm just going to demo what we're going to achieve by the end of the session and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so in this part, things are going to be quite simple, and as you can see, our animation isn't that complicated at all. But what we're going to discuss and what we're going to go through will help you to be able to get that foundation to start working on more complex animations when it comes to using sprites and things like that. So let's exit our play mode, and I'll show you how you can do this yourselves. Okay, so first things first, let's go over to the hierarchy and deselect this camera, because we're not using it at the moment, and it's sort of in the way. And then let's move this alien over a little bit. So I'm going to change its position on the x-axis to about 2. And that should be good. So we can start working on another alien. Now that we've done that, let's go over to our assets folder and see what we've got to be able to create this animation. Right, now here we have sprite sheets. And sprite sheets are pretty much just sheets that contain the different frames of animation of our object. So for our first alien, you can see right here, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that we've got an arms down pose and we've got an arms up pose. And those are our two frames of animation. And it's very similar for each and every alien because each alien only has two frames of animation. So let's select one of the aliens that we haven't worked on. So alien number two. Now here, we need to work in the inspector. So the first thing we're going to do with the sprite mode in the inspector is to make that multiple because we're going to take multiple sprites from this one page. And then in a second, we'll be able to go into the sprite editor. But first, we want to click apply to make sure that all of our changes have been applied correctly. Now we can open up the sprite editor. And as you can see here, it's a bit hard to separate the alien shapes from the background. But rest assured, if you're using the package that I put in the description, you should be fine. And I should probably formally mention that I am uploading our assets and all our scenes in the description. So just click there and you'll be taken to a mega.nz link or something. And there you'll be able to access what I'm working with just in case you don't have the same facilities or you feel like it's too much effort to grab everything, which I completely understand. Okay, so the first thing we want to do in the sprite editor is to go to slice and then we're going to just leave it at automatic and then slice this. And as you can see, it's created some boxes around our pixel art figures right here. Then once we're done with that, we can hit apply. And then close the sprite editor and as you can see there's a drop down attached to the sprite sheet now and here we have both of our phases for our animation so how are we going to animate this what facilities do we need to make use of well the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to window and then we're going to click on animation and that will give us our animation tab now with our animation tab box open we want to just click on that tab right there and then drag it down here just to clip it right to the bottom of our scene view. Don't worry if you think this is taking up too much space because you can reposition it anywhere and we're only going to be using it for this stage. So what we want to do with our new sprite PNGs is we want to click on one, hold shift and then click on the other. So click on one, hold shift, click on the other and then we're going to drag that into the scene and then wait for a second and then it's going to give us the option to create a new animation. And then we're going to call this animation alien anim2. And then save that. Okay, so right here, just going to drag this down a little bit, center it. So take it to origin on the X, origin on the Y. Should be good to go. And right here you can see that our sprite has been correctly imported into our scene. And another thing that you'll be able to see is that when I click on the different nodes here, I'm presented with a different frame of animation. And we've only got two, so that's how that's going to work. Now how animation works is it works by seconds, so we want things to work by seconds. And our samples are actually our frame rates. So if we want a smooth, milky 60 frames per second, then we can change the frame rate to that. But I will warn you, when you do change the amount of samples, the scale becomes different. We're still using seconds, but you're going to need to incorporate more frames into each second. Otherwise, your animation will look a bit fast. 
So we're going to go back to 12 samples. And now that we're at 12 samples, what we need to do is pretty simple to have our alien change from one phase to another and then back to the original. So we're just going to click on this node here and drag that over to the middle. So six samples in. And then we're going to go to this other node. We're going to hit Control C to copy it. Then we're going to click here where it says one second and Control V. And you can see that it's going to be one second because it will always match the amount of samples that you have. One second will be 12 frames if you have 12 samples. So that's how that works. And then let's take a little look at how our little alien is moving. Yeah, I think that's alright. But as I said, if we increase the amount of samples, then we can increase the speed. So if we want to make it so it moves through the animation in half a second, we can do that by just entering 24 into our samples. And then let's take a look at that. I kind of think that's a bit better. I think that's a bit faster, but it works because it's got a bit more energy in it, but not too much. So I think I'm going to keep it at 24 samples. Once we're done previewing our animation, we can just stop it like that. And then if we hit the play button here, we'll be able to actually view both animations working at the same time. But the first thing that we need to make sure of is that the transformation for our animation object is correct. So we want it to be 4 on the z-axis, just the same with every other piece that we're going to interact with. And then we're going to go right into play mode which is what i would say if we had the main camera working so now we're going to go right into play mode now as you can see we've got both of our animations working but there's a little bit of a flicker in this one so we're going to see how we can remedy that there's probably just a tiny thing that we need to adjust but otherwise it seems that our animations are working fine i might jump this up to 24 samples also so let's exit play mode and take a look at what's happening with this animation right here. Oh, what's happening here is that the position of our alien is actually changing because we haven't made that position the same on each node. So for our original node, we just need to make that four and then Unity will correct everything. It won't try to tween the movement and then we should be good to go. Let's preview that again. And there we have it, two working animations. All right, let's walk through the third one just to get that out of the way and then we'll be done with this session so again we want to go into the assets folder find those aliens we want to click on them and then with the inspector open we're going to make sure that multiple is selected in the sprite mode we're going to go over to that sprite editor hit slice automatic make sure that everything that we want is in that box and then hit apply now that we've got a bit of a drop down we can select both of these drag them into the scene and see what's happening with them. So we're going to call this alien anim two three. There we go. And then let's make sure that it is positioned well. Uh, zero on the y-axis, minus two on the x, four on the z-axis, and hopefully four here. Yep, that's fine. Leave it at 12 samples because it's a pretty easy sample rate to work at. I'm going to drag this over here. We're going to hit Control and C here, or if you're on a Mac, whatever you press to hit Copy. And then we're going to go over to here. Make sure that our samples match the current frame that we're on for one second. And then hit Control V. Preview that animation. Bump up the sample rate by a bit. Preview again, go back to this animation, bump this up a bit, take a look at that. And then once all of our animations are done, we just hit that play button to preview them real quick. And there we have it, all of our aliens are in their idle animation as intended. And to be honest, that was pretty simple, it was a pretty painless procedure. And I'm pretty satisfied with what we've been able to achieve this session. So again, that has been another press any button tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And we're going to be rolling a couple more out for the Invaders series, seeing it's coming to an end in terms of its technical aspects. 
But in the next lesson, we're going to be focusing on enemy movement. We're going to be focusing on how we can destroy these newly animated objects with the scripts that we've already created. And then we're going to, in future lessons, probably be making our game a bit prettier, adding UI components and possibly even animating our tank game object. Anyway, that has been me. And as always, I will be back another time.